even though I was born in South Central LA, my particular story starts 20 minutes outside of that in the San Gabriel Valley in West Covina, La Puente area. So I grew up in like an all Mexican, like super violent neighborhood. I didn't even know it was as dangerous as it was. I just thought that that's just that's how people live. Wild church service I was never missing. Mama made me take notes to see if I was listening. But I lived among the Mexicans, so I never did the crip thing. Instead, they gave me cans to write my name up on the bricks thing. All the while, God was training me to hear his voice. Because only he knew that I would soon make a choice. I was this tagger, slash rapper, son of a black panther. And it got high hopes for him. He gonna be a pastor. So should he run with the church boys, the backpackers of thugs? And, and it's funny. It seemed like the Lord's answer was all of the above. I remember when I was 17 and a woman asked me, are you saved? I didn't have any idea what she meant. I was like, saved? What the heck is saved? The best thing I could think through was maybe she means, am I like my grandmother? And um, I adamantly told her no, because <laughs> I'm not like my grandmother. In drugs, 16, fighting all the time. Got arrested in high school for stealing. He was just like, man, what are you, what are you gonna do with your life? Got put on a gang list. I remember thinking like, man, I guess I, I, I'm supposed to care. Went from drugs to drinking to I'm a wreck. Partying to I don't fit anywhere. I'm just this misfit of a person. My mother was like, you just need to read your Bible. My marriage was full of verbal abuse, walking on eggshells, um, but wanting so bad for it to work. I had the five bedroom home um, in the suburbs, you know, everything looked like it was great, um, but it was hollow, it was empty. I couldn't have loved anyone any harder than I loved my ex-husband. After five or 10 years, uh, somewhere along the line, he stopped liking me and he let me know in every part of his being that I annoyed Jesus. him. Jesus will feel your brokenness, whatever. He'll be your father, he'll be your husband, he'll be whatever is missing. I was living a worldly life. I was living for myself, doing the big eye. I started back really going to church. I started really trying to understand where my faith lied. I picked up the Bible and I started reading. It was Romans 12 too, I'll never forget it. That verse said, do not conform to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. For some reason, something clicked. I have to renew my mind. Theology. We are now living in an age of what I call the religion of things. Now, when I was growing up at the True Vine Missionary Baptist Church in Newhart on Highway 147 South, they used to say, much prayer, much power. I'm not suggesting that there's anything wrong with wanting or having nice things. But what I am saying is that things ought not be the ultimate thing that determines who I am. Dr. Christopher Davis, Senior Pastor of St. Paul Baptist Church, is committed to taking God's Word to a hurting and lost generation as he builds people of purpose, power, and praise. And now, and now, the preaching and teaching ministry of Dr. Christopher Davis. Chapter 22, verse number 10. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the King James Version reads on this wise. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. I'm going to preach this morning as the Spirit shall guide with this thought in our minds. Get your ass away from me use as metaphor, particularly when it comes to a metaphorical reference to the animal kingdom, God is trying to show you the temperament of people. Whenever you look at the Bible and whenever you see God using animals metaphorically, it always has to do with the temperament of people. Whenever you read the 22nd chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, what you will discover is how God is dealing with how you ought not be connected to dissimilar stuff. 
And so here in the text, he begins to talk about the trouble you get into when you try to mix, match, or connect with something that's not similar to you. I'm going somewhere now. So he says here in verse number 10, do not plow with an ox and an ass together. I'm trying to help you understand the text in context. See, the spirit of an ox is somebody, you all, who has not submitted unto the spirit of God. The spirit of a donkey is somebody who's trying to live their own way, selfishly, without being governed by the word of God, the command of God, and the principles of God. And Moses says you cannot yoke an ox and a donkey together. And maybe your problem is you got the spirit of an ox, but everybody you deal with is an ass. And the text says you cannot plow with them together. Why? Because their attitudes are totally different. And maybe, don't say amen, just look amen. Maybe the reason you keep going through rejection and depression and discouragement and hurt and you're always crying and you ain't never happy is because you keep coming in contact with and connecting with too many asses who do not have the right spirit to help you get to where God wants you to get to. Just wonder, have I got three people in here bold enough to declare, Pastor Davis, I'm an ox. I got the spirit of an ox. I'm going where God wants me to go. I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm going to have what God wants me to have. So if I'm an ox and you ain't an ox, get your away from me. I wish I had somebody. You got to be connected to the right somebody. Because they come to church. Just because they got their name on the road does not mean they got the right attitude. Just because you're in the same place with me, just because you sit on the same pew with me, just because you sang in the same choir with me, does not mean you think like me. Listen, you can be in church and still be a jackass. Hello? Super religious, know the Bible, know the 23rd and the 27th Psalm. Know when to shout, not how long to shout, know all four verses of amazing grace, but when it comes time to live out what's been put in, then you know what kind of animal you're dealing with. Let me teach what I learned. Donkeys were considered the lowest animal on the totem pole, if you please. And that was based upon the assessment and the assignment of society. Uh-oh. The donkey was the lowest animal in the food chain, if you will, according to society. Society had determined and culture had determined that the donkey was the lowest animal in the animal kingdom. Here I come. Too many of us have given power to the world and the power of our worth to let other people determine our value. And all of a sudden we begin to live out of the downgraded expectations of others because they told us who we were. Because anytime you don't know who you are, there is always somebody who is willing to define you. And more often than not, it has nothing to do with what God has said about you. Hey, well, that's a learn. Donkeys was small. Watch this now because I'm, gonna help you. I'm about to help you see if you're connected to the wrong animal. Donkeys were very small and as a result of being small they took small steps. On the other hand an ox was a large animal, a very aggressive animal and so big animals take big steps. Are y'all praying with me? So if I'm an ox taking big steps and I'm connected to a donkey taking little steps in most cases, it won't be long before I've got to slow down my pace in order to keep up with the donkey. Preach, Pastor Davis. See, being connected with a donkey will keep an ox from moving at a pace that's in line with their natural makeup. I wish I had somebody. So you're an ox, but since you're connected to a donkey, you have to overcompensate for their pace and then wear yourself out because you've connected with somebody who does not have the ability or the desire to move at the same pace that God has given you. And watch this. And by the time you disconnect from them, you just wore out. Because listen, being connected with some folk that cannot keep up will wear you out. Have I got some help in the house? Can I tell you something else? Can I tell you something else? You sure you can handle it? The donkey is satisfied 
at the pace you're moving at and is not interested in moving any faster. Donkeys. They ain't trying to get their life together. Donkeys. They could care less about getting out of debt. Donkey. What they care that you want to go back to school or finish school? They ain't trying to own no house. They ain't trying to settle down. They ain't trying to come out the club even though they're six months away from their 50th birthday. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Listen, just donkeys. But watch this. Not only will a donkey cause you to slow down your pace, but that also suggests that donkeys are satisfied at watching you live beneath your potential. And anybody who's satisfied with knowing you're operating beneath who you are and they're not helping you to get out of it is an ass you need to disconnect from. I found out. Can I tell it? I found out, bro, Mac, that donkeys, when nobody is watching them, they feed on coarse and poisonous weeds that cause them to have bad breath. I'm going to help you in a minute. They eat on coarse and poisonous weeds that cause them to have bad breath. And any animal that is yoked with a donkey then does all it can to avoid being in a tight space or an intimate space where the donkey's breath can be smelled. Because what the donkey feeds on begins to pollute the air as a result of what comes out of their mouth. So they pollute the atmosphere based on what they've been digesting. I'm going somewhere now. And so watch this now. I read that any animal that is yoked with a donkey always holds his head away from the donkey. Even if they're plowing straight ahead, he turns his head away from the donkey. I wish I had somebody. As a result of being yoked with a donkey, he cannot look straight ahead, but he has to turn his head to the side, which means he ends up carrying something on his shoulders that he should have been carrying on his neck. Somebody still ain't get it. Which means, watch this now, when I'm yoked up with the wrong somebody, I'll be forced to turn my head and I'll end up carrying some stuff by myself that I never should have had to carry if I wasn't yoked up with the wrong somebody. But watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I read that in some instances, the donkey's breath could be so foul that if you breathe it long enough, it can cause death. So you can kill me by what you breathe on me. Here it is. I don't need people in my concentric circle of influence and friendship who are always opening their mouth and speaking death and never speaking life over me. See, get away from people who only know how to open up their mouth and spew out poison and, 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 and release damaging things into the atmosphere. And after today, after today, you can no longer email me, call me, text me, or set an appointment to come see me and say, Pastor, I didn't know he was a donkey. Pastor, I didn't know she was a donkey. Because all you had to do was smell their breath. Hello? My name is Christopher Davis. I'm a gospel preacher, and I approve this message. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody.